Okay, so um, in the studio we have a backlight that Kerry's uh, moving there. <laughs> uh, that has a yellow gel in it and its job is to light up the fog. But our key light is up above uh, on that C stand, that chrome stand that you can see and it's a small beauty dish with a grid uh, and also a blue gel. Now that strip box there on the left, that's also got a blue gel and a grid on it and that provides a sort of continuation of the key light down the left hand side and provides nice highlights um, on the skin and so we've applied a little bit of oil to the skin so we're going to reflect um, the lights that are in the scene. Uh, in the back you can see the edge lights left and right uh, they also have grids um, they've got barn doors on, but to be honest, those don't really do anything. I'm just using them to hold the grids. They've got little grid holders in them. It's about a 30 degree grid. And um, they've got a sort of reddish, orangish gel uh, in each of them, providing an edge light. Um, <clears throat> that's it for the lighting. So we've got one, two, three, four, five lights going here. Uh, three in the back, one at the top, and uh, one at the front. One at the front is fairly weak and we just want it to sort of just provide a little bit of um, fill um, down the two figures. Now you can just see the fog machine fire in there and that's that um, just about see the opening just behind the strip box. Um, it's a shame the angle doesn't really show it but it's um, a silver conduit filled with uh, freezer blocks and, and uh, it's about eight freezer blocks in there. Dense fog is pumped into one end from a standard fog machine. It cost about 50, 60 pounds, I think, for one kilowatt machine. Dense fog fluid, uh, and the freezer blocks chill the fog, and it comes out across the floor. And you can see some of the fog just hanging around there on the floor. If you don't chill it, it just sort of creates a sort of a fog in a general sort of haze in the room. Um, but if you chill it, you can make some really nice clouds. And of course, when it hits warm bodies, um, it sort of um, heats up and sort of rides around them and looks fairly um, cool. And uh, then it's just a question of um, uh, Everly and Rose who we've got in this scene um, are creating some and talking about creating some sort of warrior like stances. There we go, we're going to do some pretty powerful poses. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty effective. Obviously you can't see any of that effect in the studio, um, which can be disconcerting um, for new models and new photographers alike really. Um, but once you see the first shots come in, uh, confidence levels really go through the roof. So it's important that when you're shooting this sort of stuff that you do show everybody what you're shooting. If you haven't got a big screen, I haven't got a screen in the studio, it's not my studio. Um, I, I could bring a laptop but it's, again it would still be a fairly small screen in a corner. Um, so I'd really recommend if you've got an old monitor or something like that, hook an old uh, computer up to it, put a big monitor on it uh, so that everybody on set can see the shots as they come in. Uh, but we haven't got that uh, facility in there at the moment. So we just use the back of the camera. So here's something uh, interesting about fog. Um, you can't always control the direction it goes in. So here it is um, not behaving and it's just come out, exploded and just sort of gone back in the direction it came from. I think it was because we had a window open perhaps. Um, but a handy tool to have around is a uh, effective fan, a directional fan. Has um, uh, some sort of ducting on it and this is a floor dryer that I'm using here but I'm covering up one side so that it, the air intake is coming from the other side um, and that, that quite effectively sucks up the, um, the fog the rogue fog and uh, we eject it out of the door the, we've got the door open now and I'm just pointing the, the output of the, uh, the blower and just blowing the window a bit there um, but there's always a prevailing sort of uh, direction of the wind in these studios no matter how small uh, so it's one, one of the fun things about working with fog 
it's 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 a truly dynamic actor on your stage as it were so having a bit of a reset and uh, probably also a chance to uh, just recharge the model um, just preparing herself there and here we go we're gonna have another go now and uh, have we realized yet that the windows open possibly not um, but okay it seems to be working now that's what you want right it's for the fog to go in and amongst the actors on the stage um, I don't want it to go completely behind them I don't want it in front of them not particularly like that either um, but ideally you want it in amongst them um, so that it is uh, apparent that it isn't just two models stuck on a background in Photoshop that they were in the fog uh, in the vapor Some great energy and expressions there from Everly and Rose. And we're live, I think. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, welcome to another retouching tutorial. So this is the retouching part, the development part of um, the last uh, shoot that we did of this style, um, shooting uh, sort of Valkyrie warriors, Amazon warriors, whatever you want to call them. So we've got uh, Rose here, Rose Magdalene Child and Everly Rose, um, duetting uh, on set. Uh, as part of a tutorial so um, let's get into this um, I haven't done anything to this image yet uh, but I have developed a few of these already so um, I know roughly where I am with this so um, let's sort of think and talk about um, what we're going to do to make this image uh, look as good as it can so this is a process of looking at the image and thinking, um, well, what's wrong? What can I change? And the first thing that I think about this is that the yellow is a little bit bright. Um, so <clears throat> we can play around with the, the, overall com the overall exposure. I think probably does need to come down a bit. So I think we can probably uh, take that down by a couple of tenths. Um, I'm going to look at, look at the histogram and think I've got a bit of room there. I can just stretch the, the white point out a little bit. That's pretty good. Um, we'll just try dehaze. Uh, sometimes we get some good results from that. Um, I don't think we're going to go too far with that. We might put just plus five on that. Let's do a quick check. Uh, so if we go back one history step forwards. Yeah, I think so. Um, maybe not quite that much. Let's go to back plus three. Okay. Um, black point. Yep, that can come down a touch. Um, let's check where that's showing up. Put that warning on. Yeah, I think that needs to come down quite a bit, really, doesn't it? Um, I think that's probably. I don't think we need that dehaze if we're going to reduce the black point. They do very similar things, if I'm honest. Um, but um, you do get uh, different results and dehaze is a good tool uh, for some of these because after we've shot a few frames and we've released enough fog into the studio it does tend to just lower the overall contrast um, of the shot. Now um, what else are we going to look at here? Um, 
we need to play around with the temperature sliders. Now I'm probably going to end up leaving that one pretty much where it is. I might turn it up just a touch. There we go. Actually, yeah, that does look better. Uh, and sometimes just taking a bit of magenta out on this side um, can also have a beneficial effect. But I think we're okay with that, actually. Now, the other obvious problem is that Kerry, because this lighting was originally designed just for one figure, um, she's kind of out of the light, really. Um, but um, we can put a local adjustment on. And I'm just going to use a, um, a radial adjustment for this. I might clip it to the figure, but because you can do all that kind of fancy stuff now in uh, Lightroom. Um, but I think we'll just start off like that. And we'll just increase the exposure a little bit. Um, let me turn the whites up. There we go. Okay. Uh, maybe take the blacks down and touch because we're losing a bit of contrast there. I think we can go more on that. Maybe, what about shadows? No, not shadows. Maybe mid-tones again. Yeah, we can do the mid-tones again a little bit. Now it's kind of highlighting her shoulder there, so I'm going to subtract with a brush. Um, and I think I'm going to use my pen for this. And we're going to put the auto mask on to begin with. I'm just going to take it off there. There we go. Let's just see uh, what. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. I'll go back up there. Right. Um, so regular gradient one. I think maybe just a little bit of dehaze on this one. Yeah, now that's made it a little bit blue. So we can correct that. No, not like that. Like that. There we go. So we can pull back the... Um, that's looking a bit funky now, if I must admit. So uh, let's undo some of that stuff. Um, I suspect it's the dehaze which is causing the issue. Yes, it is. So let's undo those things. Um, I think we could just take the black down a little bit. Or maybe use good old contrast. Yeah, just introduce a little bit of contrast. Um, take a little bit of that exposure off because it's looking a bit funky. go down there do more with the whites I think let's have a look see where we started where we are yeah I think that's okay I might dial it back just a touch uh, we can do that now in Lightroom without having to faff about with rolling the things up <laughs> now there's just a separate amount slider yay um, and I think that's pretty good okay now you can exit this dialog box by pressing that or that right this exits any dialog boxes, so I tend to just click that one. Um, and now we'll have a look around at what else we might need to improve. Um, I think we're pretty good though, to be honest. Let's have a look, let's turn on the usual things, remove chromatic aberration, correct for the lens. That, that probably is beneficial in this case. Let's have a look. Could we leave the vignetting on? Or is it better without it? I think possibly split the difference, I think, on that one. Um, transform, I think it is more or less vertical. I think we're just going to tweak it around a little bit there. Yep, okay. Now I don't um, constrain the crop because it's going to lose bits of the image. Um, and uh, I think we're going to put a floor in here at some point because we can see a bit of the, um, the floor. Uh, if that was all fog, I wouldn't bother, but I think we can put a texture in there, which is going to look pretty good. Uh, right, okay. I think we're pretty good to go, really. It's a quick check of the uh, play around with some other things. Um, shadows, maybe. Bring up the shadows. Just gives it a little bit more fill. Um, there we go. Um, highlights we could take down. We could do that. Um, oh, I'll tell you what we could do actually, uh, do some colour based um, tweaks. Um, we might just bend this hue 
a bit more towards the sort of red end rather than the green end. So if from, we don't want that, we want it to sort of be a more warm colour. Um, and we could take the luminance down on there as well, but this sometimes just makes it go all flat. Yeah, it starts to look a bit crap. So we won't do that. Um, sometimes if you just increase the saturation instead of that area, that has the net effect of lowering the, the exposure a little bit. Um, and I think that, that kind of looks better um, than actually lowering the luminance, increase the saturation instead. Um, that's pretty good. I think the only thing, um, just thinking about it, um, we will... Um, So it's only detecting one person. Oh, but but the one person is both per people. <laughs> okay. Entire person. Um, create mask. Yep. Okay. Um, we'll do some people-based things now. It's missed a bit there for some reason, but um, that's okay. We can add a brush. Alter mask on. Um, just draw that in. It's missed a bit there as well for some reason. A um, bit of hair. Um, and uh, we might also subtract just these odd bits down here. Um, go back to brush one, just add that bit in. And I think that'll do. Maybe just um, feather in that edge a little bit. Um, right, okay. So we've got this mask, and we could now, yep, yeah, just increase the exposure slightly of those, of just the figures, uh, just to make them pop out just a little bit, just drag the whites up a little bit as well. Um, <clears throat> that's going to give us a little bit more. Um, can we use our old friend D Hayes on there? Um, maybe one point. Yeah, let's test whether that looks better or worse. Yeah, I think that's definitely improved it. Um, so there we go. So don't forget about that. All these new features are available in Lightroom to sort of do things um, with individual people or even individual features of people. So. Um, <clears throat> Let's um, switch over to Photoshop now and do our little, all our cleanup and uh, special effects and whatnot. So here we go. And we can edit in Photoshop 2023 is the version we're at right now. The year is 2022, um, but um, Photoshop, um, sorry, Adobe. Um, Make usually make a major release of Photoshop around this time for uh, Adobe Max, and we've got a ton of new features in uh, both Photoshop and Lightroom this year. Uh, the masking features in Lightroom are just like astounding now. Um, there's a lot of these pictures, more character-led pictures, um, which don't need you know. There's not so much skin showing. Um, where I haven't even used Photoshop. I've been able to do all the adjustments and they've, ne they've even got content aware <laughs> on the heel brush now in Lightroom, which is pretty fantastic. Um, and that's the first job for us here now. Um, and this is finished ruminating. Right, so I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool. Just go around that like that. Uh, and I think on this occasion, I'm gonna hold the shift key down and just select all of these. I'm double tapping to close the selection, so double tap there, and then hold the shift key to start a new one. Once it's started, you don't need to hold the shift key. Uh, and then we'll press F5, which is my key that I've got bound to um, the fill dialog box, right? Um, select content aware, make sure that's selected. Okay that, and it will fill in the selections that you've made. Now we'll drink some coffee, as Thierry Cooper says, time for some coffee. Okay, there we go. And um, Photoshop has done a perfect job on that. 
Well done, Photoshop. Now, we'll have a look around and see if there's anything else that we need to clear out. So I see a cable there. Um, so I think we'll, um, we'll just do the same trick around that. Um, it's not very visible. Um, but um, all, is, all the same. You know, I'm going to take this stuff out. There's, I know there's another cable over here. Um, and I can just about see it. There we go. That's gone. And um, there is a light stand behind here. So we can't really see that too much. I just about see a hint of it there. Um, there we are. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to demonstrate some of the techniques we use um, where things touch the figure. Um, you can watch, um, there are other videos on my channel that do show that. But we're good to go on that. Right, now we're going to clean up um, sort of lumps and bumps <coughs> um, using the liquify tool. And there isn't really a lot to do here. But, you know, I should say that um, no matter how fit um, you are as a model, in certain poses, especially when we're doing dynamic poses like this, there are going to be um, the odd unfortunate crease, right? And for the sake of the art, um, I smooth them over. Uh, so um, it's not something really to lose your mind about. Um, I know people like to get upset these days about, um, you know, uh, people modifying um, body shapes, and you shouldn't really do that. Um, but where you're creating a piece of art, you know, I, I find that the photograph is the input to the piece. It's not the final piece. And I do mess with these quite a lot. But on this case, the, there isn't really anything to do. It's just where you've got tight costumes on like this. They are going to create little pinch points like that. And I can improve the look of that. Um, and it's not any kind of comment on anyone's kind of like, you know, uh, shape. Um, it just is what it is. Um, and it would happen to anybody. Now, I'm using the forward warp tool here. What I'm doing here is just trying to sort of make a more sort of uh, rounded uh, shape to the hairline. So I'm pulling up bits where it's there's a gap and I'm pushing back down bits um, where they're sticking out. All right, and if I want to, you know, so I can see my, my progress there. Now I need to match the size of the forward warp tool to the size of the curve that I'm adjusting, the size of the object, yeah? Um, Kerry's got some really good um, bold curves going on there, but I, I can just improve it just by smoothing out, you know, any sort of um, flat spots there. Um, sometimes just tuck in um, the arm muscle out and maybe pull the shoulders out a little bit. Um, okay. Can do very small tweaks to waistlines. Um, like that. Okay. And this costume is a little bit unfortunate, so we're going to help out just by restoring, uh, making the brush shape look a bit more natural again and here's our little bump that we want to smooth out so I'm just going to pull out the bit that's been pinched in and, and that's pretty much it I do you don't want to get rid of it completely it'll look completely unnatural um, that's it really I don't think there's anything else we need to do oh we could just um, just emphasize the eyes a little bit don't go overboard with this um, but eye size is one of the things, one of the few things on here that does work pretty well. Um, the rest of these facial adjustments really don't work. Um, jawline, yes. Um, smile, no. <laughs> mouth height, yes. Mouth width, mm, if you're making it smaller. Um, lower and upper lip can work. Um, forehead, never really use. Um, chin height, almost never use that. Face width, hmm. um, 
eye tilt. Yeah, I guess. Um, eye width and eye height, never use those either. And eye distance, no, <laughs> don't touch that. You'll make them look completely different. Um, that's it, that's a final sort of before and after. Um, let me zoom out. Look, always look at your picture at different levels of zoom. Um, and it's really gonna help you evaluate um, what you need to do. Right, so we're gonna jump now straight into skin cleanup. Uh, and the first job is just to remove any uh, obvious uh, blemishes. Now for these sort of um, smooth fantasy type things, I need smooth uh, fantasy type skin. So we're gonna remove uh, just every single little uh, mark, um, which you wouldn't normally do um, and at the same time. I'm going to just remove any sort of uh, lines. Oh, you've got to be careful you don't get up to the edge of something with this tool. So I'm holding the Alt key down to uh, sample. Um, from a clean bit and then just dabbing on top. Now if you zoom in, of course, you see more things that um, you might want to remove. So, um, but this is going to be a full length image. So we're not really gonna see um, detail on the faces. Of course, the, the, the problem with them um, duo images is that there are, there's twice as much face to uh, retouch. Okay, that's about as much as we need to do there. can do quite big bits uh, with this. Um, the patch tool is the other uh, friend in this uh, situation. I could have done that one with the patch tool. Um, try and work in one direction for this so that you're not sort of cloning um, features over other features, you know, marks over, over other marks. And uh, I don't know why Photoshop bongs. No one seems to know. I've Googled this a few times. But occasionally it just gets upset that you're pressing too many keys or something. So we don't have to reposition the sample point all the time. Um, so if we work down an area like this in a linear fashion, rather than going all over the place, we can get away with just continually dabbing. The sample point does move, of course, and it moves relative to wherever you're dabbing. So, here we go. Our other arm, let's do that one. Our other arm is good. Just a few marks there. Some little um, clothing marks as well. Okay. Just working our way down. Marks on the legs tend to be a bit bigger, so adjust your brush accordingly. Bit of a crease there, which we can, oh, that's not really worked. No, I don't like that. There we go. That's better. And all this, you know, sample from a, a nearby, a like area. So if you're doing one of these highlights, don't sample from over here. You need to sample another bit of highlight, um, like that. Okay. Just get rid of that strange little anomaly there. It's, it's um, a consequence of using oil, um, where there's like an edge to it. There's a dry bit. You will um, sometimes get um, what looks like a hard edge. 
and we're going to kind of smooth over some of the tonal and colour gradations in a minute um, without affecting the um, texture. So we're going to preserve the texture and um, just do some work on the tone and broad colours underneath. We're good. Um, piercing holes with no earrings. There's always one to watch out for. Um, face, yeah, we want that expression, so I don't want to remove those um, lines. Um, so we check of the sword while we're here, because um, this sword has got a little bit battered. Um, we've used it a few times now. We're going to do. Um, we're going to put an edge on this uh, in a bit. Um, and actually, I quite like all this sort of um, patina. Right, <laughs> it is just plastic, um, but um, uh, doesn't look too bad. Um, this is supposed to be the bare metal, though. So um, I don't want. Um, the black plastic underneath to show through. It, it shouldn't. This this surface shouldn't weather off, right? It should be um, the, the actual metal. It should be solid all the way down. Um, this is a real pain in the butt to um, paint um, because the paint would not stick, um, and I used every type of tried every type of primer known to man, but the masking tape. For the, where these boundaries were, just kept peeling off the um, the paint underneath. Anyway, right. So now I'm going to press this magic button, which is running my action for um, frequency separation. Now again, this is another thing that people lose their minds over. Um, frequency separation in itself, as you'll see in a minute, doesn't actually do anything. Right. So when people say um, Oh, don't use frequency separation, it looks terrible. Well, no, frequency separation in itself doesn't do anything to your image. It's what you're doing to the image um, after you've set up the frequency separation construct is what's causing your problem. Um, all the frequency separation layers do is separate the frequencies, right? And in this case, we're using it to separate out the skin texture from the skin tone and colour, right? And the way we do this is we're looking at this now, at this intermediary step, and whatever is blurred, whatever we can't see, which has vanished because of this blur, is going to end up on the, on the texture layer, right? So we don't want to see any texture at this point, right? And we can't, but you want to get it right. And I know for a full figure on this camera, a value of about six, is, is right, but you want to tune it till the till the uh, the texture just disappears, um, and then it's going to run the rest of the action. And as you can see, it makes no difference to the image whatsoever. We can t turn it on and off, and it, it doesn't make any difference. Now all the work that we're going to do today is going to be on this low frequency layer. We're not going to touch the texture layer. Right? If you have got really bad texture and you want to bring in some texture from uh, another part of the image or even another image, um, you can do that. Um, uh, and I use the patch tool uh, on the high frequency layer to do that, but we're not gonna do that today. There isn't anything that needs that kind of attention. So uh, we're gonna jump straight in. Um, and uh, what we're really gonna do is just smooth out um, the colors and tones. And we're just gonna do that just by blurring the colour and tone layer selectively. No, I don't want the eyes included in this, or those dark areas of the nose or the lips. So I'm going to deselect those. And then I'm going to hit another magic button on my pad, um, which brings up the Gaussian blur dialog box. And I'm going to blur it by about the same amount that I used for the separation. And I'm going to do it again. Um, actually, I'm not going to do it again, so I'm going to want to do that. Um, now some of these bits need doing, and I'm hitting a key now, which repeats last filter. 
so I just did that Gaussian blur about another six or seven times um, and there's a bit there that we can just smooth over and now if you want to see what's happening you turn that on and off you see some of the highlight is destroyed uh, and we can get that back if we want later on at the end of this process but um, generally speaking um, it's just smoothing out the tones and colours and I don't want to now we're going to mask this off these areas to be honest because it will bleed into them even though I'm deselecting them um, but this is more so I don't get these colours bleeding in um, to the uh, the resulting blur now that looks pretty good to me um, now we can select this in sections we don't have to be too um, precise with this um, I can hold the shift key down and add to the selection and hold the alt key down and take away from the selection um, but as I said we're going to mask this off in a second anyway and I'm going to put two lots of six on that get this chest area here yep that looks about right um, don't want to go all the way into the fingers shoulder two lots on there neck just one I think on there don't think I'm going to do anything to this to be honest but we'll put one lot on let's do this arm go abdomen abdomen there we go missed a bit there hold the shift key just one lot on there now the legs tend to need a little bit more work um, they do a bit more work and so The anatomy, anatomy, um, the skin can be, you know, got uh, larger blood vessels and things on there. Uh, just missed a bit there. In fact, I'm going to go around that a little bit there. And we don't think we want any of that really. So we'll just hammer that repeat key until all of that goes away. I'm going to use the mixer brush in a minute to do some finer pieces of adjustment. Now some of this variation in um, tone on here is down to the fog. Um, so it's not necessarily a problem. Let's do this other leg here. So we're going to use the mixer brush now, I think. Um, I might just do a bit more work on that. There we go. And this arm as well, just right in the middle. Uh, so because I have to mess this up, I'm making a copy <laughs> of that layer. Switch to the mixer brush, which is M on my keyboard, but it um, will be whatever you've selected on yours. <clears throat> and I have it set up as 30%. Um, 30% load, all these at 30, flow at 10. But the important one is this, we're not applying any paint to the brush, we're not loading the brush really. So it's just gonna work with the colors that are um, underneath it. <clears throat> and um, what I'm gonna do with this is sort of smooth out some of these highlights. And I find that this really makes uh, a big difference to these images and I can extend them as well. So we can just sort of tease that out um, just even them up and that further extends the illusion um, of um, <clears throat> smoother skin uh, now I just held down the R key and rotated the canvas um, it doesn't actually change anything in the image it's just the view right and that is just so that I can make more natural brush, stro brush strokes um, as you, your um, hand will naturally describe a sort of um, an arch, you know. Um, and trying to do arches that are upside down or sideways is 
very unwieldy. Right, and you can press escape to make that go. Now you can look at the changes just by removing that layer. You can see that's extended those highlights. We can also use this just with a bigger brush, just to sort of smooth out, um, but smooth it in a directional way rather than just blurring. Um, we need to make sure that we're not destroying, you know, changing the shape of the. Uh, so I don't quite like that bit, so I'm going to undo those. There we go. And uh, be a bit more mindful of where I'm brushing. Um, <coughs> there we go. Um, we need a bit there as well. If you go backwards and forwards it will do a general blend if you're going in one direction it's going to extend whatever that is um, so just be careful with that um, and this is a soft brush by the way and uh, that is quite important for this task let's look at the arms that looks pretty cool already so does that that can come around a little bit And other than that, I think we're good to go. Is there any work we need to do on the face to smooth anything out? We could just extend, just so now I'm pushing just from left to right, just to push that highlight into that dark area. Um, and we can just see what that looks like there. So there's multiple ways to do this, of course. You know, you could dodge and burn this. Um, but so I quite like to work with the uh, frequency separation layer for this sort of work. Right, if we zoom out, you can see the effect. So it's just made everything that little bit more sleek. But, of course, it has destroyed some of the edges, um, and so we need to mask it off. Now, unfortunately, on these, these with these little bitty costumes, we've got a lot of edges. Um, we're gonna put a white mask on there. I'm gonna to switch to the regular brush um, soft brush, so make it sure it's soft, 100% everything, and black. Okay, and now we can start at the top, and uh, as promised, we're going to go around the eyes, around this little sort of uh, jewel thing, which looks fantastic, by the way. I think that really worked with this set. I'm going to go around the edges of the face, around the edges of the um, facial features as well. Uh, make sure it's actually doing it. As my, my, one of the tricks that I do is I merrily paint away with white on white and kid myself it's making some difference. Um, <clears throat> let's do Kerry's face as well. So that one around the edge. Bring back that detail wherever um, there was detail to be had. Right, so I think you can see it just along that arm there. It's hard to see this on YouTube sometimes because of the uh, compression. Um, but it is um, just bringing back uh, the definition of the edges around the arms there. Because what's happening, of course, is when we, we did that is it brought in some of the background colour. Um, and the colours tend to bleed into each other so we'll just go around with this um, that section there there we go uh, come down on this one uh, tattoos as well make sure you go over those and any creases they just look rubbish and I see this on some images around the internet where people have not masked this off and um, it's really produced weird effects on their um, on the creases in their picture. Any hard shadow edges as well, um, restore those. Um, you know, we definitely want all that uh, drama that we work so hard for. So around these edges, come back to those little tassels do one leg at a time, I think. There we go. 
Right, so we've got some more costume detail here to go around. Creases. We're good to go, but let's check. So the one way to check uh, is to just look at the mask that you've actually drawn and look for the gaps. So you can see there's a bit of work here to, that we can do. Now it probably isn't affecting the middle of the lips, if I'm honest, but we'll fill that in anyway. I see there's a bit of a gap there. And let's just see what's going on here. Um, closer what's that there so that needs to come off doesn't it I think we're pretty good just checking around there's a bit of a bit there it's a bit at the top of Kerry's forehead there there we go And that I think we're good to go because we didn't do anything really below this area because it's all hidden in fog. Um, now we can zoom out and see all of the nice smoothing that we've done. Right, that's great. Now I don't keep the layers, okay, <laughs> for the Photoshop purists, um, it will make their eyes twitch. Um, it it be. You get to a point where you can't mess with that anyway because you've done all the stuff on top. Um, so it's it's not a completely non-destructive way of editing uh, in Photoshop. Um, sue me. Um, it it makes the machine slower and um, it just confuses me later on. And I'd just be tempted to come back and tinker with it endlessly. So um, we're just going to commit this. Commit. Commit to. Um, the changes that we've done there you know it's too late now <laughs> right well it will be in a minute because there's about 100 undo layers which will be eaten up pretty quickly right um next thing we need to do on the skin just to complete the skin is we're going to um just give it a little bit of zap and i'm, I'm going to there are multiple you could do this with curves layers okay i like to do it this way i'm just going to create three copies of that with screen um, and before we um, go any further I'm just going to make this make a, a selection of the subject um, and I'll wait that wait for that to cook and that's pretty good for this purpose um, I don't want the sword in this though so um, let's get um, let's just what are we doing? I want that one. Why is it switching to the brush? Honestly. Okay. Um, I can deselect that. Deselecting things takes longer in Photoshop than selecting things. And why? Why deselected? The face, I have no idea. This tool isn't brilliant, if I'm honest. Quick selection tool. Um, you'll go backwards and forwards with this a number of times, but that's pretty good for our purposes. There's a bit, bit of extra there. Um, it's only really going to affect highlight areas, this anyway, this process, so I'm not too bothered. I'm going to save that selection. Um, since I had to work a little bit to get it. Um, I'm just going to call it models. And um, we're now going to put these layers in a group, Control G, and limit what we're doing just to that area. Okay. So now we're going to use the blend if sliders. So I just double tap on the right of the uh, layer to get the layer style dialog box. 
what I'm looking for is to just affect the highlights. So and I'm going to do this for different areas because they're receiving different levels of exposure. So down the bottom, uh, we're going to need to be a bit more aggressive. So I want to position that slider just to where it's going off um, and then split the slider um, and uh, then rock that back and forth till it looks good. Now we could go for a bit of general fill in, but it starts to look a little bit funky. Um, and I reckon somewhere around there is the answer, but of course it's too much up here. So we're gonna put a mask on that. And then this is, this is interesting, right? So in, in Lightroom, you would do that by doing an intersection on your mask, but in Photoshop, what we do is we have two masks. We have a mask on the layer and a mask on the group. So I don't need to be too clever about where a brush, I'm just gonna get a big broad brush, 100% white, and I can just paint that up, but it's only going to go on the figures. Um, because of the other mask above. Uh, and I can just go up to where that might be a little bit too much. I'm gonna just take half of that off. So uh, I pressed five to get 50% opacity uh, and X to reverse the colors. Uh, and I press zero to go back to 100%. Now we're gonna do the next zone in the same way, but we're gonna dial it back more on this, okay? Because um, we wanna get it to just where the um, upper body uh, is going off in terms of um, effect and then rock that back and forth until we like it. I think it's about there. Now this can help. I think we're going to need to knock that back a little bit. Um, so let's do that now. So take that down to about 50% I think. Yeah. Now just a little experiment see what that does on Kerry's face. Probably a bit too much. Um, so again, we'll take half off. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad actually. Um, looks for a look at the whole thing. Now I think on that, I probably could just edge that in there because that wasn't getting a lot of action. Oh, wrong one. 100%. There we go. Just up there. Now we can look at the whole thing. Now they stand out quite a bit. Um, I think the whole thing is a little bit too much, so I'm going to reduce the overall opacity of this down to 50%. And there we go. Right. So let's flatten that, discard the hidden layer that we didn't use. We very rarely need three, but I just make three because it's easy. Oh. So now, here's the hard bit. Um, this is what they call a practice sword. Um, and um, so a practice sword is designed um, or engineered to have roughly the same weight and balance uh, as a real sword, but it's made of plastic. <laughs> so, so of course, to get the same sort of weight as a steel um, saber, uh, it's very thick. Um, and that means that it doesn't actually have an edge, right? But um, if we think about what would an edge, a straight edge look like, like a sharp edge in, in comparison to this sort of rounded um, uh, edge that we've got at the moment, is that it, you can see that there's a gradation because it's, um, it's rolling, it's rolling around. If it was straight, it would be a linear um, progression. And so we can just draw one um, that's the easiest way to do that, I think, was the easiest way I've found. Um, and I'm just going to use the old fashioned, or the good old pen tool to do this. So we'll come in quite close and um, we'll just start here. And we're just going to draw an edge on here. So put a point down. And then for most of these things, now I always get tempted to put way too many points on here. So I'm going to try and do this. 
click and drag so that you get the little uh, handles that make the bezier curves. There we go, like that. And uh, wherever you, you think that the curve is sort of changing, um, put another point in. Now, we don't want to go around the back of the, the um, thing, of course. So, um, in fact, let's undo that because I want to, um, uh, we want this to come to a tip here, really. So we're just going to put a point in and I'm not dragging at that point. Um, so now I'm kind of making it up. <laughs> this is where we, we've gone off piece now. Um, and it's going to get fat there, I think. And we can adjust these in a minute, so uh, I don't need to be um, too precise. And then it's going to come down uh, and be more of a linear shape, I think. So uh, again, let's not put too many points in it. Um, and then we're going to join it up. There we go. Now, I'm going to do those adjustments. So um, zoom out a bit. Uh, let's get rid of this dialog box. I'll go over there. Now you need to hold the control key down for all of this. Because that went a bit off, didn't it? So let's, uh, let's get that a bit further in. And adjust these things. That should be fairly flat. Here. And you'll get the hang of this pretty quickly um, as to you know what you need to drag about on these handles. Um, if you want to learn how to use the pen tool, um, Glyn Dewis has a very good uh, explanation um, on his channel. And um, so does uh, Unmeshed Inda on um, Pix Imperfect. I think we need more of a point there, don't we? So let's move that in there. That needs to come out a little bit. And let's tidy this up to the edge of the uh, the actual edge that we've got as our guide. Pull that out a bit more there. That's a little bit free floating. Pull that one out. It's looking about right now, I think. Um, yep. It just needs to be outside of that. Um, so that the original doesn't really show up. Right, okay. Uh, and on that note, I think that could possibly just be a bit bigger. There we go. Right, so now we need to just make a selection. There we go. And um, having worked to get that, we're gonna save that selection. Edge. And now we're just going to put an edge on this. Now um, these metallic objects are going to, in fact it's uh, it's done a strange thing and um, made a inverted selection. But there we go. Um, swords like this are going to reflect their environment so um, we just need to really, we're going to go to the um, linear gradient and we're going to select Going to select two uh, colours. So I'm going to swap the selection there. I'm going to select this colour. So now we've got our two colours. I'm going to swap them back again. And we're just going to get the linear gradient and just experiment with drawing. I'm going to hide the 
marching ants. And now you can see that, um, well, in fact, I should have done that on a new layer, shouldn't I really? Let's, um, let's undo that. Bring that back. And uh, we're gonna deselect. We're going to put a new layer. Reselect and do that again, just so that I've got a bit of control over it after. So let's try that again. So we're going to go off to about there, um, hide the ants, and now you can see we've got a straight edge, um, which is pretty cool, right? Now we can further adjust this um, if we want a little highlight or something like that. If we get our brush, um, we've got 100% soft brush. Um, we could put a little highlight just there on the edge, right? And that looks pretty funky, right? It now looks like it's got a sharp edge on it. As before, and that's after. So let's combine those. That's that job done. Um, what else do we need to do? I think we're pretty much there, to be honest. Oh, we might do some work on the eyes, actually. Um, let's brighten the eyes a little bit. We're going to do this with good old curves layer. I'm uh, going to get the little uh, selection tool and I'm going to highlight the, uh, the eye whites and I'm going to drag that up quite aggressively. Okay. And then we're going to select the um, iris and drag that back down. Oh, I've still got the selection active. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's start again. Right, let's bring back the marching ants. We haven't got the selection active. There we go. It's better. Let's try that again. That's always the danger of hiding the selection. So bring that up. And then bring that one down. So it's going to give us a lot more contrast in the eyes. And of course everywhere else, but um, we'll fix that in a second. So uh, with that in mind, we're just going to reverse the, the mask, make it black, get a brush, 100%, and we're going to just dab in the middle like that. And do both eyes, or both models I should say. Might just have another one on there. Right, now we don't want that affecting everything else, so um, we're going to then switch to black, go around the edges with a small brush, and then do the same trick, hold the old key down, click the mask, now we can make the brush bigger we can see exactly where we need to paint eyeballs are round right which is why we've used a soft brush to dab this on because it's fading off into the corners I'll click again and now we can see what we've done we zoom out have a look at that you know and we might go even a bit more aggressive with that. So let's go back to our curve and grab those points that we made earlier and just drag them. There we go. That gives us good contrast in the eyes. And I'm going to switch it to luminance because it's luminosity because it's doing a few funky things with the uh, colour in Kerry's eyes. And I don't want that. There we go. Right, so that is it, I think, for our retouch. So now it's time for the special effects. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, we can do some things with the uh, floor here. Um, you know, it looks like what it is. It's a black painter floor, um, and we don't really want that. So let's go and get some rock texture, I think, uh, to put in the bottom, and uh, Photoshop will stop bonging at me. So I'm going to go to my um, collections of backgrounds, which are down here somewhere. Too many collections. 
textures, backgrounds. There we are. And if past me has been kind, um, I will have start this. Yeah, there it is. So we're going to use this one, which is um, the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. So I'm going to open that in Photoshop. Wait for that to happen. See the crazy white bands changing on my face as the sun goes down. Right, there it is. Now, there are all kinds, I see all kinds of crazy ways that people use of selecting and copying and pasting to get this image into that image. Yeah, you don't need to really be that complicated about it. Um, I realize this stopped working. Come on. Just drag it up to the other image and drag it down like that. There we go. Now this was taken with a D810, I believe, so it's a slightly smaller image. So we'll do a transformation on it. Hold the Alt key down. So it expands from the middle, just make it a bit bigger. Right, okay. Now, um, we're gonna switch this to overlay. try soft light soft light might be better it's going to give us a bit more of a, an idea for a guide right now uh, now you remember earlier um, I saved a few selections so we're going to get the models selection back and uh, we're going to apply the inverse of that there we go just to keep it off there and uh, we're also going to do some um, layer style blend if stuff because I don't want um, I want the fog to go over it so there we go and we'll start to blend that in right over it just there okay switch to a different let's switch back to overlay what we might need to do a bit of a curves adjustment just to this so we'll hold the old key down clip that to the layer below and just give it a bit of a brightness boost which we'll come back to that adjustment in a minute Get that in a group. So let's go back to our blend if sliders. There we go. Split the slider. Obviously, we don't want it up here, um, so we're going to remove that. So, in the group, I'm going to put another mask on, get the brush, black brush, 100%, quite big. We're just going to remove it off there. Now, we could keep some of that background actually, just check out what was there before. I think we're going to have to do some um, corrections on the mask, I think, down here. Let's just clear the uh, layer style off that for a minute so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to reduce the opacity. And I'm just going to manually mask this off so we're going to get a black brush photoshop would behave and um, we're going to make that a little bit of a harder edge so go to maximum just back it off one well i'm 
painting on the wrong thing. Bit of this foot missing as well, wasn't there? So let's go ahead. Yeah, that's here we go. Quite see what's going on there. I don't forget this leg either. Presumably a foot, but um, you know. I think what we might do is let's put the opacity back up. Not quite that much. that back to overlay. Right, let's manually blend this in, I think, right up to the edge of the fog. So we'll take, take it off everywhere. Okay, make the brush smaller and softer. Put it back to white. Put it in around here. Okay, there we go. That's all we really need. Do a bit of adjustments on the blend diff as well. <clears throat> there we go. Right now. So put it in. That's a bit odd. that or does it make more sense to have that like that <coughs> so I'm making a few decisions on the fly here as to whether we want um, this to be actually part of the background and to be honest I think it's the wrong perspective I could lay it down and do all kinds of things with that but I don't think I'm going to bother, so I think we're just going to take this off. And we're just going to stick to the original plan um, of having it in the foreground. Um, <coughs> I 
on that note though, um, I do think it does need laying down a little bit in terms of the perspective. Um, so I'm just going to drag that out a little bit and go back to scale, drag that down. <clears throat> so that's going to lay it a bit more flat. It was looking a bit too um, vertical there. Um, now then, we can now go back to um, maybe soft light overlay, hard light. No, I think, I think soft light looks pretty cool. Let's go, let's play around with the curve a little bit more. Bring up the uh, the general. That looks pretty cool. Now we can see some of the texture there, and we'll have a let's check some of our other adjustments. Keep it just off that. There we go. So what does all that do? Right? It just puts a little bit of, of interest, a little bit of texture into our um, floor. Um, I see it was a little bit funky there on the edge, so let's clean that up. It makes it a little bit less like um, a studio floor. Now, um, the interesting thing about this is now we've created all of this, we can slide in other textures quite easily. Um, so if we go to wherever Lightroom's gone, um, we can look at other rocks. Well, I might not have any suitably, because we need something quite aggressive really for this. Um, to hand. Um, one thing I have used in the past is this, um, which is actually a piece of quartz, I think, which is in a museum in Funchal on Madeira. Photoshop is um, just completely playing with me now. Um, right, same trick. Hello. That's away with the fairies now. Now we're back. Okay, so now we get another layer. All right. Um, and I'm going to turn that one off and I'll unclip that. Unclip that. Turn that layer off. Um, and I can now just copy that mask onto there. Um, get this move tool, move that in. And again, it needs um, just extending a little bit. And so go Alt key like that. It also needs uh, some perspective skew. So we'll do that. We're going to zoom out quite a lot because we need to really get this down like that. I'm going to go back to scale, bring it down. So now it looks like an actual floor. Which is pretty cool, I think. And obviously it needs adjusting in terms of blend modes. So let's go to soft light. And we'll try overlay. Overlay, soft light, I think. Yeah, maybe overlay actually. I think I prefer that. 
Uh, let's just toggle it on and off. Obviously, we haven't got the um, blend if um, layer styles on there. Um, we can copy layer style, paste layer style. Um, yeah, I prefer that. Um, uh, and there you go. <laughs> Sometimes it just plays to it pays to play around with different textures that you've got in your catalog uh, and do um, I'd encourage you to go and collect those as you're wandering around if you're going on holiday things like that if you see nice pieces of texture nice rock walls uh, and it can be any scale like I say that was just a piece of quartz it's about that big um, but you stretch it out and you apply it with the blend mode at the bottom and all it's doing really is providing some sort of leading lines on our picture that makes it look like a floor um, and that they're not standing in a studio so we'll flatten that a lot because we've finished with that. Now we're going to do the fun bit, <laughs> which is the uh, we're going to use um, we're going to use a plugin called Optics from Boris FX. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is just duplicate the layer. You need to duplicate the layer; it doesn't do that for you. And we're going to start up Optics. Now I updated Optics earlier today, and I haven't tested it. So fingers crossed um, that it's still working uh, as expected. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is very simple. Um, I'm going to um, just put some stars in the background. And this is what I used to do that. If you've seen any of my images in this style before, um, we just, okay, whatever. Um, we're just going to render the night sky. Um, and I just use the default. There's all kinds of um, other ones, but they tend to be a bit heavy handed. So we're just going to use, we'll, we'll click on one, you know, um, there's Gemini, Orion, so there's different constellations you can click on. You can also just change the uh, uh, latitude and longitude and um, date and time um, and get uh, any view of uh, the night sky. Um, and you can change the direction that you're looking in as well uh, to get on these presets. But um, I tend to just, I must admit, I tend to look, I like the default one. Um, that's just about right, that is. So that's all we're going to do for this trip into optics. I'm going to come back in a minute for some flares. Um, I want to put a little, just accentuate that little edge there that we put on the sword. And I'm going to put a little flare on that, I think. So we'll wait for this to apply. I've run out of coffee. Um, and daylight. seems to randomly go to some other app um, and then just keep bringing up other apps um, but there it is okay now um, we need to mask this off our figures so um, we'll bring back our um, selection from earlier this is good enough for this one because uh, we're not we're just going to mask it off completely off the floor so uh, we don't want it on the sword either so let's zoom in a little bit and uh, we will use the quick selection tool make it a bit smaller hopefully it's going to be able to um, tell the difference between the sword and the background pretty easily yeah right into that corner as much as I can without it going berserk um, select the rest of Kerry's hair that'll do um, I'll go around and inspect manually in a minute so let's hold the alt key put a mask on there we go that's got rid of the stars off them um, I'm going to put it in a group put another mask on that get a brush and just brush it off all of this okay shouldn't really be showing through all the fog um, and I think we'll do uh, put a layer style on this and um, I'm going to mask it off the white bits so just there where it starts to disappear and just bring 
bring that gradient down, just split it. And like let's mess around a bit a bit okay that should do now obviously we don't want it down here at all so we go back to our mask just remove it off the um, because that would be ground. Do we want that? No, it makes no difference really. Just leave that off. Okay, so that's our star field. Now we can duplicate the layer again. Filter, Boris FX, Optics 2022. Get back into Optics. This time we're going to use the flare engine um, so no we don't want light sky again um, so we're going to go to light flare and we're going to get this very strange um, flare thing um, and we're going to zoom in a little bit and I want to put that on there but obviously we don't want to use this particular preset so um, let's go and look for something um, a little bit more suitable that sports and that one's not too bad um, obviously it's miles too big um, so we're gonna go for 200 maybe there we go that's not too bad oh didn't mean to do that Let's get rid of these uh, things there. We just want the positioning. Okay. Right, let's go back to fit. Now uh, that's not still not quite right, I don't think. Let's have a look for a more suitable one. No. It's not bad. It's got a bit of orange in it for some reason, but it's not bad. That one is not good. That's not too bad. Mm. We don't really want ones with too much haze around it. I want a nice clean sparkle. Um, if only I could remember which one I used last time. I should write this down really. That's not too bad. Um, I think now we've got that there. I can see that needs to come down a bit. It looks like it's outside of the sword at the moment. I have to use the uh, manual adjustments for this, so hotspot. Yeah, that's adjusting it by right, okay. Oh. Let's try point seven. Okay. 
seven two. Yeah, I reckon that's about right. Okay. And it, yes, I don't reckon too much to that one. Let's go back to Sports Arena, make it a bit smaller. stand up the down one unless I rotate that of course short swing solar panel glare um, nope nope Under the sun ones, yeah, they're all a bit aggressive. That possibly is the best one. Yeah, I think we'll stick with that. Um, it needs a bit of adjustment. Is there an angle? Rotate. Right, there we go, there we go. That's nice, okay. Needs to come. That way, just a bit, there we go. Nice, okay. Don't think there's any other obvious high points where we could put another one. So I think we'll leave it there. Could maybe get a bit bigger now. Yes. There we go. Okay. Let's look at brightness again. What brightness did I have just before? Oh, that one. Do we need to adjust the position? A little bit. There we go. Right. Stop messing and apply it. Weirdness. 
this. We just wait and there it is. Okay. Now we can play around with the opacity and I think I will just reduce it slightly. There we go. Right, we're almost done. Um, I think we're going to do one last tonal adjustment. So I'm going to um, combine this layer with itself using the apply image um, with a multiply um, blend mode. And then the resulting one I'm going to recombine with screen. Um, and we're going to blur this by 45 pixels. And it should be about the same as the number of megapixels on your camera. Um, and I'm going to take the opacity of that down, way down to about 16%. It just gives a little bit of overall glow to the highlights. But we need to toggle it on and off and just make sure that it actually makes it better and not worse. I'm not liking it so much actually on this one. Try and read that opacity, say about 6%. Does tend to destroy some of the contrast. And that's okay. Maybe 2%. <laughs> right, final, we'll abandon that. Um, just going to do some selective sharpening, just using the good old sharpening tool. So eyes, lips, nose, uh, anything that we want to have a little bit of zap to it. Um, maybe our sword edge. Hair is always a good one. Sharpen that up. Feet, toes, maybe. There we go. These highlights, maybe. There we go. Okay, and uh, I think we're pretty much done. So um, let's let's save this back and maybe do some final playing around in Lightroom. So we'll save it. Watch the dialog box pen anymore. Uh, we'll wait for the uh, image to save. Using zip compression these days uh, on my Photoshop files um, saves a bit of disk space uh, but it does take a long time to save sometimes. Not normally this long though, this is really crawling along, 30%. There's loads of other things we could do with this, images like this. You could like do radial blurs of the backgrounds, make them like they're bursting out of something. Um, there's rays that you can put on in uh, optics. Um, you could play around with it for hours. Uh, but in the interests of keeping this <laughs> tutorial down to a manageable level of uh, waffle, um, I'm just going to leave it there. I think we've gone through most of the um, the techniques that we needed to. So skin cleanup, especially with oil and highlights like this, um, it really pays dividends to do that right. Um, so keep the texture, frequency separation. If you want my frequency separation um, action, just drop me a line. I will email it to you. It weighs nothing. Um, it's just a few K. Um, if you want to know the maths behind it, um, just have a look on YouTube. There's lots of people who will explain the ins and outs. I've long since forgotten it. Um, but uh, it's out there if you want to learn it. But um, I, just pr I just use that action. That I recorded years ago. Um, so do the skin cleanup, 
um, get the tones and colours right in the image. So we did that first in Lightroom, um, playing with the colour balance of the tint um, and just observe what it does to the image. And then if you want to, you can then use the HSL panels to do individual colour channels um, and tune those. Um, then once we've done the cleanup, we're doing our special effects. So um, in my case, I need to put an edge on that sword. If you've got a better looking sword, if you get a prop sword, they're usually really light um, and will probably have an edge, um, you know, even though they're made of plastic or foam. Um, practice swords don't, uh, or just get a real one. <laughs> or the other way of doing it, which is some, something I've started doing for real uh, high concept fantasy, is I manufacture the items in Daz 3D Studio. So I render them in CGI, basically. Um, that's quite involved. It, it takes uh, multiple days <laughs> for me to do that. Uh, so I don't tend to do it for these. Um, but if we're doing a real um, ex expensively produced piece, um, I will render objects in Daz 3D Studio. We do it there because I can light them exactly the same way as they were in the studio, so they look right. Um, and then there's all manner, I've got all kinds of swords and uh, other objects. Angel wings is a favourite thing. Uh, and a dragon, which I haven't used yet, which I need to get around to. Um, so I might put a dragon in the back of one of these, see if that works actually. I didn't shoot them with that in mind, to be fair, so um, it might not work too well. but. Who knows? Anyway, it has finally saved. So let's nip back to Lightroom. See, my backup's finished as well. Um, and we need to go back to uh, where we were. So let's go back to this collection here. And uh, our image has appeared. Now let's have a look at it compared to um, the shot. Now it's comparing it to itself. What's going on there? Same shot? No. There we go. Okay, it was that one. I don't know why it wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't lying, was I? I wasn't imagining that. It had two copies of the finished image. Anyway, um, now it's working. Adobe, sort yourselves out. Um, we can now see um, where we came from. Um, in fact, I can't really show you the can I show you that no it just swaps backwards and forwards between that um, but that's where we started in Photoshop before Photoshop that's after Photoshop all right so you can see the changes that we've done obviously removing the corners um, slight tweaks to the shapes um, putting the floor in the stars in and the uh, the flare just there um, so if we go back to the develop module we see the final results. If we go back to the NEF and um, we go back to where, that's where we actually started. Okay, uh, so that's, um, now that is, people say things like straight out of camera and that, that's, that's bollocks, quite frankly. That is a phrase that I will never use um, because it isn't straight out of camera. Um, when you can't view a raw file, Right. So what you're looking at there is a processed image, but processed using some uh, set of default values. Right, That's another processed image processed using a different set of values. That's not a raw file. That's also a processed image, and so is that. They're just processed with different parameters, and we set some of the parameters in these sliders over here. Um, and that's why comparing raw to JPEG is just a nonsense question. Uh, you can't you can't view a raw file. What they're actually comparing is two JPEGs, um, and one's been uh, processed using a different set of parameters to the other one. Um, and so they like to do these comparisons. They'll say things like, "And the raw file has less contrast." No, you're comparing two JPEGs, and strangely, the one with less contrast dialed in has got less contrast. <laughs> um, 
you know, go figure. Anyway, um, and then after our Photoshop adjustments, that's where we've ended. Now, we can do some final tweaks back in um, Lightroom. Uh, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, let's just play with the, um, the tint sliders. Because uh, I'm thinking dragging it back a little bit towards the magenta may work. Although sometimes dragging it the other way and then back to zero will just prove you wrong. Um, and possibly I'm wrong. No, I think actually plus two is looking good. You can also play around with the... Um, sometimes if you want to know which direction to take it, do the extremes. That looks pretty bad, right? But that doesn't look terrible. It's bad, but it doesn't look as bad as the other way. So I think positive, a positive uh, adjustment there. And if I want to just change, just check where we started, where we arrived, I think, yeah, that's just giving it a bit more zap. Maybe not quite that much, but there you go. Um, I'm looking at these just to make sure that we're not, yeah, clipping on the sword is okay. It's a metallic object, or supposed to be. It isn't really, of course. Um, can try some of that dehaze as well just to sort of is that going to give us better or worse or just adding contrast will that do what we want I think not in this case because it's really affecting the highlights so we're going to leave that off I think a bit of dehaze might not be a bad idea not too much probably about plus four there we go Because those other adjustments we did, it's filled in a lot of the um, sort of shadowy areas. Um, I take the blacks down a little bit. There, we see that pop up there. There's more variation there, more tonal changes. Maybe a little bit more. So there aren't actually any blacks at the moment. So if we just continue to dial that down, we'll see them creep in down there at the bottom. You see, we've gone quite far with that adjustment. Now, a little trick that we can do. Oh, not that one. I meant to click that one. Um, I just want to see the last adjustment. So I'm going to make that the before. Let me go back to this one. And now I can see before and after. And I think it's too much. So um, I'm going to wrap that back up. Yeah, I think that's about right. There we go. And the white point, yeah, that's pretty much where it needs to be. And play around with the HSL. Luminance, let's try blue. Yeah, there's a lot of blue on the sword there. So bear in mind that what you think is blue, so I know these highlights are a blue light, but because they've been combined with the skin colour, they're actually down here really in the magenta. And I can dial those up a little bit. There we go. I think that'll do for me. I think we're just going to output this and call it done. So um, I don't really want to output the uh, MEF, so Control Shift and E, export. And uh, for this one, I'm going to want um, a full size screen image and one for purple port. So I'll do both of those at the same time. That's where it needs to be. Export. And it'll do both of those now. That'll be interesting to see whether we matched um, previous ones. And I might do a few more changes just to match that. Um, because I quite like those tones and I quite like those tones as well but there we are I'll go over here okay um, so that's looking pretty good I think um, I might do a few tweaks uh, to the colour in a minute but just in the interest of keeping the video to a reasonable length um, I think we're going to stop there because that would be fine and if I hadn't just seen that other one to compare it to I wouldn't have done anything else to this um, so thanks for watching. Um, as usual, you know, these videos are completely unedited, so uh, you get to see me change my mind. Uh, 
um, and try different things because that is the reality of uh, developing these images. It's not a, I could, you know, rehearse this, go in, bish, bash, bosh, and say, there you go, it's simple, isn't it? Um, but I think it's important that you see that there are creative choices to be made, decisions to be made, mistakes to be made, right? Um, to get, this is how you get to the, the, um, uh, the final image. And, uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. More videos coming along at some point. <laughs> okay, bye.